Hey guys, here are five useful built-in macOS features that I use on a daily basis. All these features should work as long as you have macOS Mojave and up. Starting with number five, we have image conversion. I mainly use this feature to compress image files to smaller file sizes. This is super useful and handy when it comes to uploading password photos onto websites where they have a file size limitation. Usually they require that your file size is less than one megabytes and you're like, what do I do now? There are online image compression websites but personally I don't feel safe sharing my personal information on an online compression tools like it seems a little sketchy therefore this built-in feature is great here we have pictures of Ryan Reynolds, Shahid Kapoor, and my channel's profile picture. As you can see, Ryan Reynolds' profile is 1.4 megabytes, Shahid Kapoor with 248 kilobytes, and my profile picture is at 67 kilobytes. Clearly, Ryan Reynolds' profile picture size is slightly off limit. All we need to do is right click the image, go down to Quick Actions, and select Convert Image. This allows you to convert the image into different format, such as JPG or PNG. In addition to that, you can also focus on the file size. So in this case we are going to focus on the image file size options. For the most part we are trying to keep the quality of the image the same but reduce the size of the file itself. So for this exact need usually for the most part the large option will ideally do the job. However there are cases where the large option file size may be greater than the original size. Then the second option is perfect. The medium size option will do the job. Overall the menu will show the new size of the file so you can just select the one that best fits your need. In addition you can also convert multiple files at once you just do the same thing but this time you're going to select multiple files right click and convert image and here we have the images almost the same quality but just reduced file size so they should be good to go to upload on any website all right moving on to number four we have converting images to pdf and then converting the pdf back to images First, let's convert the thumbnails of my other videos, which you should definitely watch after you finish this video. But let's say I want to share these thumbnails to a friend, not as picture files, but as a single PDF. All we need to do is select all the image files, right click, go down to quick actions, and this time we want to select create PDF. And in a matter of seconds, we have the PDF ready to share. We can rename it and go from there. Now that we have the PDF, let's say we want to export it as image files. And that's also quite simple and built in. All we need to do is open the PDF file in the preview application. Once the PDF file has opened up, we need to go to the page we would like to convert to an image file. In this case, it's page four. Then we go into the top menu, go over to file, then export. This will bring up a menu where in the format option, we can select an image file type such as JPG, or PNG. We want the best quality of course and we can rename it, select where we want to save the file and click save when we're done. And here we have page 4 of the PDF as an image file. Unfortunately, this method only does a single page at a time. I have not figured out a way to export the whole PDF to separate image files yet, but a lot of the time I personally don't need all the pages, so this does the job and it's very convenient and handy. You may say, why not just screenshot the page? Yes, you could just screenshot the page of the PDF and it will be an image, but a lot of the time it's hard to select the whole page and the quality of the screenshot will not be as good as exporting it into an image file using the preview application. Therefore, this way is just much better. Moving on to number three, we have removing the background of any image file. A lot of the time you want a transparent PNG file of an object or a subject without the background. So you go on Google and you type, for example, Shahid Kapoor PNG. And yes, these all may be PNG files, but some of them are not transparent where, you know, it's not just a cutout of the subject. So you have fallen into the trap of those fake PDF files. So what do you do now? Well, macOS has a quick solution for that. It's honestly super helpful. And I use this all the time for making my thumbnails. So here I have pictures of Ryan Reynolds and Shahid Kapoor, and I would like to remove the background so I can use them in the thumbnail of this video. All we need to do is select the images, right click, go down to quick actions, and this time we want to remove background. And there we have it. We have two new files with an updated file name with the addition of the words background removed. It's not always perfect, like it missed a spot here on Shahid Kapoor, but for the most part it does the job fairly well. Just look at the one with Ryan Reynolds. 
The cutout is absolutely perfect and now I can use it on any thumbnail. Moving on to number two, we have screen recording and I use this all the time for my videos, showing screenshots of products on Amazon or recording a YouTube video that I would like to use in my video later. All you gotta do is launch QuickTime Player. This application should come pre-installed on your Mac OS. Go on the top menu, go to File, you have three options. First, it's the new movie recording which allows you to record yourself using the webcam. Then you have new audio recording which just records the audio. And and lastly, we have the new screen recording, which allows you to record your screen. These are all handy and easy to use. I always use the new screen recording. I just click the screen recording option and then click on the screen. Once I do that, we will see a recording icon on the top right of the screen. And when you're done recording whatever you want to record, you just click on the icon on the top right, which will bring out the recording preview and you can preview your video and save it where you would like to save it. In addition, I would like to mention, most of these will only do video. Like for example, the new screen recording will only do screen recording. There is no audio. So if you want to record audio along with your screen recording, you will have to start a new audio recording along with a new screen recording. And there will be two separate files. So you will have to like link them together. In terms of the movie recording, that one will do a recording of your webcam and audio at the same time. But unfortunately for the screen recording, it does it separately, which is kind of annoying. But you guys let me know if there is a solution to this or if it's already built in and I'm just not aware of it. Anyways, Moving on to number one, this is the most common feature. I use this almost every day and it is the screenshot feature. If you do shift command four, it will get you into the selecting mode where you can select a portion of the screen you would like to capture. And that's usually my most common way of using it, but there are other ways to screenshot. If you do shift command five, this will bring a whole menu for different types of screenshots, such as capture the entire screen, capture a selected window, and the most common, which is the capture of a portion of the screen, which is same as what shift command four does. And that's how you screenshot. And I use this all the time for sharing screenshots with friends and family. It's super useful and captures a very high quality screenshot. Lastly, I want to share a bonus feature and that is the split view, which is great for when I'm doing research and I want to take notes at the same time. I can have a video or an article on one side and my notes on the other. What we need to do is expand two separate windows using the green button and enter full screen mode on a separate virtual desktop. Once you have both windows in full screen mode, you go into desktop view mode where you can see all your desktops and all you need to do is drag one desktop into the other and it will split the windows and give you this split view. You can adjust how much space each window takes up. Maybe you want one window bigger than the other and you can easily do that. Well that is it for today. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell icon, and as always have a superb day and thanks for watching.